So that's where the Japanese part of this plot comes in. Uh, the detective story, the Japanese plot here with, with beginning in a way with Musha. Um, so uh, Musha was a secondary school teacher, also a writer of an English-Japanese dictionary, a geography teacher, I think. And um, he went to work as a volunteer for the then uh, for the Earthquake Research Institute of, of what was then called the Imperial University of, of Tokyo. And, and um, it was during the war that he brought out the, in 1942 and 1943, these three volumes that have been printed recently in, in green and bound. But these, were, these things were initially issued by mimeograph. And they were, um, they were the result of his going around to temples and homes of prominent families and libraries and, and thumbing through um, ancient uh, record books of, from governments, uh, private diaries, and, and, uh, and, and keeping track of, of accounts of earthquakes and related phenomena. And the related phenomena for him included unusual surges of water on the coast, even those not accompanied by shaking in Japan. So he collected accounts of a tsunami in 1700 in Tanabe and up here in Otsuchi. Um, this final volume, as a footnote, this final volume came out after the war. It doesn't have the imperial notation of the greater symbol there on it. And, and the, the manuscript for this went through the firebombing of Tokyo, three meters underground in a, in, a, in a galvanized steel box in the backyard of his seismologist mentor. Um, so Musha's work was on hand, was in hand for Japanese earthquake and tsunami historians. Uh, at the time that the 1960 Chilean tsunami took a lot of Japanese scientists by surprise. Uh, Japanese seismologists knew that there had been a very big earthquake in, in Chile on May 22nd of 1960, um, but they didn't think that a tsunami, a tsunami would, from an earthquake so far away could possibly be damaging to Japan. Uh, 133 lives were lost, uh, 53 of them in, this, in the town uh, that this is part of, of uh, called Ots, um, Ofunato in northeast Japan. This is the lucky number 13 uh, fishing boat. And, and so this sent Japanese earthquake and tsunami historians back to these old documents. And they had catalogs of Spanish, of uh, Spanish language catalogs of earthquakes and tsunamis in South America. So they said, well, 1960 came from Chile, yeah, this thing. So they, they went back guided with, by the catalogs of South American earthquakes and tsunamis. And they were able to find in Japan the orphan tsunamis from these earthquakes and associated tsunamis in South America. But they also found more of this thing in 1700. And they couldn't find a home for that in South America. So from the, from the Japanese side, this had been a long standing mystery as to where this thing in 1700 came from. It's not like uh, tuning into North American Earth Science uh, Japanese researchers said, oh, we need to go see whether that tsunami shows up in our, in our written history. They already knew about this event. So some of those who, who had been working on it, the leader who'd been working on it was this woman here. Um, her family name is Ueda. Her given name is Kazue. And um, her associate uh, a civil engineer, Suji is his family name, uh, Yoshinobu, his given name. And here they're thumbing through old books down in, in Tanabe in uh, the late, in the, I think the middle 1990s in this picture. But it was Ueda-san who, who picked up the mantle of, 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 of Musha. And, and she proceeded to compile uh, a, 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 a huge set of of, um, of records of old earthquakes and tsunamis in Japan. Her, her collection came to, I think, 21 volumes and some seven, uh, close to 17,000 pages. And um, so she did much of the same work of going on out to the countryside and ferreting out these, 
these old things. And the, the, most of the documents she'd work, work with had been partly digested by bookworms. And you know, it's kind of messy work. And they, but they'd photograph the things. And then they, it, took, it takes special training in to be able to read this old Japanese. And then she'd render it into modern characters, verify it, and so on. So anyways, in the course of doing this, just systematically, much in the way of um, the people who did, uh, uh, the, put together the Oxford English Dictionary of, um, of having quotations about the early uses of words and having little pigeonholes to put the quotations from each word, she had a little file box of things for, for the 1700 tsunami. So um, <clears throat> the, the, I'll give the bottom line on the Japanese, the contributions from this Japanese work first, and then I'll give you an example of, of one of the documents. Um, the, the bottom line, as I mentioned earlier, is that, is, that the, is that our earthquake can be pinned to the 26th of January, 1700. And, and you, will, you allow for a 10-hour travel time, like a jet going from Portland or Seattle over to, to Narita. And then, um, and then also you, you convert from this Japanese calendar into a Western calendar, and you, and, and, uh, you can get the exact time. And uh, that's, then, then the other thing that you get out of it is an estimate of the size of the earthquake here. And that comes from the descriptions of flooding and damage in Japan. And those have to be converted into estimates of the tsunami height in Japan. And then computer simulations of a tsunami traveling from our part of the world to Japan have to be made to fit various sets of height estimates. And from that, those procedures, you end up with this range that's around magnitude 9 and puts us up in the, in the, the Cold War or, or Bush presidency kind of <laughs> tsunami size, earthquake size. Huh? So, so for me, the way this, the way this worked for me um, was that I, I'd been uh, called upon by a, um, a very skillful uh, emergency manager for a county on the coast of Oregon. Um, her name's Stephanie Fritz. She's Pacific County's emergency manager. It's the southwesternmost county. So it, 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 it has a little bit of the Columbia River, um, and it's got Willapa Bay, essentially, south of Grace Harbor. And, and she, had, she was on top of the tsunami problem long before most county ma emergency managers were. And she recognized it would be useful to have scientists out there to serve it kind of as her warm-up act and to try to establish some credibility. But I wasn't, I wasn't very good at it for her, I don't think, because I'd stand up and I'd say, well, uh, sometime about 300 years ago, probably between 1680 and 1720, there was either a series of earthquakes or a single big earthquake. We don't know which. And, and you know, so by comp and, and you've lost a lot of the battle in some ways when, as a scientist, you admit to uncertainty, right? And it's, it, we, all, we all live with that, but, the, but public consumption of, of, of uncertainty is a problem. So it's easier now to stand up and say, well, on the, 20, the night of the 26th of January, 1700, there was, there was an earthquake of magnitude 9. And people say, oh, OK, he must know what he's talking about. <laughs> and, and, and furthermore, you say that the dating comes from Japan, and everybody says, OK, Seiko watch, watches, you know. And <laughs> so it's got to be right. So, so I think you know I, I really do think though it gave cover to the to the to engineers to um, to the the makers of tsunami evacuation maps. Um, it it um, Mei Mei Wang is here from the uh, Oregon uh, Geology Agency that has uh, done marvelous things with with getting um, uh, schools. Um, made sc making existing schools more more safe uh, seismically and and you know programs like that I think it, they they thrive on on being able to make a, a confident assertions about what happened here in the past 
And so, so I, you know, it was, it was very useful that they did this. All right, so um, here's what the records say. And um, they, you read them from, uh, from, right, from the right here on down in the columns. And, and they're, they're keyed to the place here. So the, um, the book that Scott mentioned is a US Geological Survey book. Um, I'm one of six contributors to the book. Um, so it's not just my book. Um, Ueda-san, Suji-san, you've seen their pictures. Um, I mentioned Kenji Satake, and then a tree ring scientist. I'll show you a North American uh, tree ring scientist. Um, there, together, we put the book together. 